Hey everybody, uh, gonna pick up from the last video of making the Damascus billet. Figured we'd uh, do the whole knife. Let's get to it. So I've had a few people uh, mention the last video, said it was helpful, and asked if I could uh, film the rest of it so they could see the whole knife being made. And sure, why not? Um, so this was the original billet I did up in the last video. Um, I've got it ground on uh, the sides there, ready to go and put together. Here are the other two, all done up. So um, if you don't know how I got to this step, look at the last video and uh, you'll see how I did these so we'll put those all together and uh, turn it into a knife and uh, see what kind of pattern we're gonna do and all that fun stuff before we get to that uh, again a, uh, a if you would please check out the new website hoj forge.com hoj forge.com um, and I'm really curious I know someone mentioned um, that they tried to look at the mobile site on an Apple iPhone, I guess. Um, and things just weren't lining up right. And I'm hoping I took care of that um, on the sales page, specifically. Um, they said the prices were overlapping on whatever. So if you could check that out and let me know if you have an Apple iPhone. Um, check out the sales pages and let me know if things are lining up because I don't own any Apple products. So, um, there we go. Let's get to the video. So here she is. Uh, got her in a, a vise here and I'm going to clean the sides that I'm going to forge weld together. And I think this was the one I was planning to put in the middle. So you definitely want to make sure both sides on at least one of them. If you're doing three, you need two, you know, the outside ones you only need one side clean is what I'm trying to say, but uh, you can just do both and there you go. Okay, so uh, they're both ground down now we need to cut them and we want to try and get it pretty close to The same size And you'll remember, uh, if you watched the last video, I always said that that last quarter of an inch is always questionable. Let me see if it'll focus on here. Um, you know, you're, you're folding the layers over, and you just don't know. Is that showing up on the camera? You know, there, there's just something right there. You just don't know. So I'm going to hack it off right before that, so that I know all the welds are solid. They're all good. And when you cut it, you'll be able to see if there's not a weld that uh, that took. You know, it'll it'll be a dark line in the otherwise shiny steel. So let me cut it, and we'll see what we got. All right. So there's uh, the cut edge, and you can see there's no flaws inside the billet whatsoever, which is perfect exactly what we want okay here's a little trick I found when you're putting it together if you take that middle layer sorry these are hot from uh, grinding let me uh, let me throw on a glove so if you so if you take that middle layer and stick it up that's a little too much but stick it up just uh, you know a sixteenth of an inch maybe an eighth of an inch past the end this is gonna be the end this is where the tip of the knife is gonna be um, that way when you forge it down these two layers are gonna the outside layers are gonna wanna you know shoot forward more you're gonna avoid some of that fisheye that you would normally get so it doesn't have to be much just a little bit on the back side I could have left it a little long, but that's going to give me a, a on the back side I could have left it a little long, but that's actually going to give me a, a pretty good spot to put the handle because we want the handle nice and solid while we're doing the knife because uh, you know we're going to be manipulating that metal pretty pretty good there. So let me get this welded up and uh, we'll get the forge fired up and get to making a knife. Okay. 
Okay, so while the uh, forge is uh, firing up there, let me go over some uh, thoughts on the pattern. So we've got the billet here. If you forge weld that together, and then you forge the knife from the side, you'll get the pattern where all the layers just run up and down the side of the knife. Really cool look, uh, and I actually do that a lot because I love the look of that thing. Uh, for this one though, uh, I'm going to forge weld these together and then forge the knife with this as the top and that as the top or top and bottom or whatever. And then after we get to, uh, I don't know, quarter of an inch, maybe three six, eh, quarter of an inch or so, uh, I'm going to do kind of like a ladder pattern but at angles. Um, I call it a sunburst. I think it has a name, um, but I can't remember what it is. But I just call it a sunburst because it sort of looks like the rays of the sun when you're uh, before you pound them out. So I think I'm actually I've got to see if I've got enough steel uh, for the knife I want to make before you do that because you do lose a bunch of steel from grinding those lines in. But I think that's how we're going to go. Now you could always just forge it down, grind it, and whatever pattern you get, you get. That would be just a random pattern. Uh, you could forge this into a square and twist it and then forge the knife out. Do that a lot too. Um, I love the, the spirals going down. So uh, lots of different things you can do. Play around with it and you'll come up with uh, neat and interesting things you can do on your own. Uh, you could. Uh, another thing I like to do is I like to take each of these individual billets, twist them, and then when I put them together, put another layer of like 15 and 20 in between them and you get these stripes going down with three separate layers of twisting steel. Um, it's pretty cool to do it that way. So uh, there we go. Forge is almost ready. Let's get this heated up and uh, gonna forge weld this together just like forge welding everything else together. The question I got uh, on the last video is what hammer do I use? This is a two and a half pound rounding hammer made by a guy named Dave McConnell out of Kalkaska, Michigan. Um, uh, a somewhat close neighbor of mine and, and uh, I went to visit him at his forge and saw the hammer and fell in love with it and so I had to buy it. I can put a link to his Facebook page down in the description because um, I know he makes other hammers uh, and they're actually pretty dang affordable. I don't remember what I paid, 90 bucks, something like that. So here we are just like on the, the other billets. The inside's not going to heat up as fast, so you got to pull it out, let the heat even out. While it's orange like this, I'm going to put some flux on it. Throw it back in there, let it heat up a little more, pound the layers together, get the spaces out. You know, just like the last time. So this one, it shows up real good on the camera, I think, but you can see the outsides. Bright, bright orange. The inside just a dull orange. So they're, you know, they're heating up at different rates. So this, I've found, it has two added benefits. One, it compresses all the layers together, so it gets less, you know, you have less space to worry about. Um, but two, the anvil works as a heat sink and sucks some of that heat out of the top layer, lets them get closer to temperature. Because again, the whole goal is to get the whole billet up to welding temperature all at the same time. On one other thing, since this is the final weld uh, for the knife, we're going to forge the knife right after we're done forge welding these together, is I'm probably going to do five welding heats. You know, at least four, maybe five. You want this one to be as solid as everything you've ever done. Because, you know, if you have a little flaw in one of those early welds, by the time you get done folding it, it's going to be so tiny. When you get to grinding it, if you run into it, it'll grind right out. You run into a flaw here, and that could run from one side of your knife all the way through to the other side of your knife, and you're never going to grind it out.
Okay, again, I'm just looking to see if uh, any of the layers cool at different rates. And everything looks pretty dang good to me. Um, Uh, there's a little line right there, but that's where the uh, the layers just weren't quite the same thickness. Other than that, everything looks pretty good. So we're going to start flattening this out so we can turn it into a blade. Um, I'm going to use the, the rounding die and the hammer for that so it stretches this way and that way. And we'll, uh, we'll keep going here, see what we can get. And a reminder, everything at or near a welding heat while you're forging a knife. Back to the flat die, just to smoothen it out again. See, now we're uh, way below the welding heat, so I'm not trying to forge it, I'm just trying to smooth out some of those hammer marks. So they're, they're less to deal with as we go. Okay, so here's a real good example of something you want to deal with now when you notice it. I've got a weld that didn't take right there. It's only on the last few layers, but if I go grind it out now, it goes down there about an, you know, an eighth of an inch, and it goes in about a sixteenth of an inch. So if I just ground that little section out right now, yeah, it might mess with the pattern a little bit, but it's going to deal with that flaw now. And I don't have to worry about it later. And that's the kind of thing you can catch right now when you're doing it by hand. This would suck if you got to the end of the blade and that flaw was that big at the end, or bigger, because you didn't deal with it now. So I'm going to go grind that out real quick. I can tell you the worst feeling in the world is when you get to the grinder, the belt sander, and you're doing the finishing sanding on your knife and you see something like that. Right here, I'll grind this out. By the time we're done forging, you'll never know. So it should just be that easy. We'll put it back in, you know, if there's any more that's going to delaminate, it'll come apart and, and we'll deal with it as it comes. But deal with it early and you'll have a whole heap in helping less amount of problems on the final knife.
Yeah, and I mean, you can't even tell where it was. Look at it. You know, it might mess with the pattern a little bit. If you're doing something very specific, you know, what can I say? You, you run into these problems. But for what we're doing, you know, a little grinding here, a little grinding there, it's not going to make any difference. So let's keep going. So we're getting to the point where I want to start thinking about where I'm going to put the tang, how long the blade's going to be, and as I'm forging it flat now, I'm just going to be keeping that in mind. I'm not doing anything specifically now to set the tang off or anything like that, but I'm going to be keeping it in mind so that as I forge it, you know, I know kind of an idea of where I'm going with it. schools of thought for doing this uh, whether you're doing ladder pattern or the, the thing I'm gonna do we can do it now that's about the right thickness right about a quarter of an inch maybe a little thicker we can do it now grind it flat or pound it flat and go from there I like to know where my tang is so I know how far back to do, do the grooves because there's no point in putting them under the handle scales so I'm gonna go ahead and Start forging the tang, that'll let me know how much steel I have left for the blade. I know I'll get the question, how much metal do you uh, leave for the tang? I always shoot for about a four and a half inch handle. That's a little big for my hand, but pretty comfortable for people with big hands. Um, and so that's what I shoot for on a handle. I aim for about two and three quarters to three inches of where I start working it. Uh, I can always grind a little more if I have to, but that's about where I shoot for. That's my aim when I start is about, you know, figure about three inches, um, depending on how thick the metal is. I've still got to, to thin it out quite a bit, so that's going to lengthen it uh, quite a bit more as well. So um, that's about where I start anyways. And this is why I like leaving the handle on it, because it makes doing this step a heck of a lot easier.
and it's four and a quarter and I'm not quite done with the thickness yet but I also can't go too far up yet because I've still got to cut the channel so why don't we do that now ah you can see another here we go let me see if that shows up on camera where are we you can see a bubble there so that means that's a layer of steel where the weld has come loose I probably got it too hot is what I'm thinking on that one so again I'm gonna grind that out now and get all the way down through it so that I don't have to worry about it here we go Okay, so right there, as I'm grinding away, that was some, I don't know, something that got in between the layers. So even though I was super careful, had some forge scale or some other crud that got in there, and that, or I got it too hot. That's the other thing, is I could have gotten it too hot and burned the steel. So, um, it's good that I'm doing this now, because if I had gone through that there was you know pretty good layer of steel over top of it I probably wouldn't have noticed and when I went to do the final grind I would have gotten to that and the knife would have been so thin at that point that you know it, it, it could have ruined the whole project so deal with them when you find them and then you don't have to worry about it anymore so there we go everything that's bad is gone how much steel was that yeah you know a little bit you can see that's still about a quarter of an inch that's down to three sixteenths did I lose a few layers yes can I still save the knife absolutely hundred percent because I dealt with it now so let me go ahead and cut the grooves in then I want to uh, pound down I just got to be real careful because we're getting a little thin on the tip there so I know I'll get the question why are you cutting the grooves um, because I like forging bevels and when you forge bevels on a Damascus knife that you're going from the side there's not going to be a ton of grinding. The grinding is what reveals all the different layers and so I'm trying to do less grinding which means I have to come up with other creative ways to see the layers. So you can do twists and things like that or you can do it this way. Uh, I love this pattern so that's why I'm doing it and uh, I'm just going to cut some grooves not a lot maybe four or five on each side and yeah anyways let me just do it Alright, so those grooves, when we pound them flat, are going to bring the layers up that are in the middle. Uh, and actually, yeah, we'll leave them like that. I don't want to go too far. So now, you have to get the grooves on the other side in between these. You don't want them lining up, otherwise that steel is going to be too thin. So we're going to, we're going to go in between. And to, to mark it, I'm just going to do a little notch while I'm looking at one side. And then when I go to line them up on the op opposite side, I'll know where to grind. Okay, so here, all we're doing is hitting the high spots.
Okay, so I'm going to put a little curve into it so when I uh, hammer in the bevels, it straightens back up. See what that gets us. And now we really want to start worrying about forge scale because we've got to start thinking about our finished product here. I'm actually going to do it using water because I'm getting a lot of forge scale today. And water just blows it right off. You stick your hammer in it, and we'll get a much nicer finish at the end here. Okay, one thing I'm noticing is I'm getting way too much of a curve on that tip. So I didn't curve bend that down enough. All in all though, it's looking about like what I wanted it. It's not quite to the final shape. I'll have to do a little grinding on the shape, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's blow some of that forge scale off over the whole thing and see how we're looking and then we can put the final curve on the handle. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and forge it. The human eye is drawn to gentle curves. So I'm just trying to get a gentle curve from there to there and a gentle curve from there to there and then not too much of a curve on the knife itself. I learned that about the curves as my days as an artist. the rest of that. So, um, the handle's looking just a hair thick right now, but we needed to thin that out and draw it out about another quarter of an inch anyway, so let's do this.
there is looking pretty good. Let me grab my tape. Major thingy, where'd it go? Put the side I can read. I was shooting for a five inch knife and uh, we're about an eighth of an inch short. So I'll take that considering how much I had to grind off of there. So I don't like that bend in the handle. I'm going to straighten that up and then put a gentle curve in the handle overall. So let's do that and then I think we'll be able to call this one done. Sort of what I was after. Get just a gentle curve there. Gentle curve there. I think that's pretty good. So let me do the uh, just a couple of spots I want to uh, address with some water. It's just a little pit there and a little pit there and if you hit it with the water it'll uh, blow that forge scale off you know work the metal but you're not going to be uh, forming any new forge scale as you're going because of the water and I don't know why it works it just does I, you, again you don't have to do this I'm doing it because I'm trying to do that forge to finish the less grinding I have to do to get all these uh, forge marks and little divots out and things like that the happier I'm going to be and there's still going to be plenty of grinding to do there's still you know a little hammer mark there a little pit there All right, let's uh, let's get her straight. Don't rush through this step. This one is one you want. As perfectly straight as possible. I promise you, it'll make your life a lot easier when you get to the final grind. If you don't have to worry about even the slightest little bevel in the blade. You're never going to get it a hundred percent perfect, but if you can get it 95 percent perfect, that'll just make your life hell of a lot easier. I can see one little spot right there on the end of the handle that I just don't like, but that's still quite thick. And I think that'll grind out just fine. So, there we go. Uh, let me see what we wound up with for the handle before we call it good and done and 100% done and all that. We are at four and a half. So right there. So you gotta show up on camera. We're at four and a half. So right there. So that's perfect. Um, I think I'll end the video here because I've got to let this uh, anneal. Here, let me show you that.
And so for annealing it, there's lots of different ways uh, to do it, depending on what you read and where you read it and all that fun stuff. You can heat it up to critical and bury it in uh, sand or ashes or other junk. I have found that shutting the forge off. Now again, I'm using anthracite. This might not work great with bituminous because bituminous will still... Uh, no, actually, no. Bituminous would work, I think. Might not work with charcoal. But... Uh, Shut the forge off, stick it in there, it's going to heat up to critical while it's in there, uh, but not get any hotter because uh, the forge is already cooling off. But it's going to take four, five, six hours for it to cool down completely inside that pile of what's going to turn into ash. So um, that's just the way I do it. Might not be the perfect way, but it works. Uh, why anneal it? Because that's going to soften up the metal, put it in its softest, softest state possible, and that's what you want when you're drilling handle pins and doing all the grinding and stuff. You want that metal as soft as you can. Get it. So, uh, let's wrap this video up. Uh, sorry again for the length. I meant to keep this one shorter than the last one, but I don't know, making a knife is a time-consuming process. But, I'll tell you what, it's still fun! So where are we time-wise? Uh, I've got about three hours, three and a half hours into making all the billets. Um, and then probably another two, two and a half here into putting those three separate billets together and getting to this point now. So what's that, five and a half? Probably almost six hours into it at this point. Um, which isn't bad, because I'll tell you what, if I had started out, again, with those, you know, all those layers together, 21 layers, a huge two and a half inch billet, trying to pound that down by hand, I'd still be working on it. I'd still be going at it. Uh, it would be driving me bonkers, and I'd be cursing myself, saying, why did I want to do Damascus? So again, if you take it in smaller chunks to put the Damascus together, um, it'll just go quicker. So hopefully this helped you out. Uh, remember to deal with any issues you see in the Damascus as they come up. Because if you deal with, I mean, I don't know how many times. How many times did I have to go to the grinder? Um, at least twice uh, to deal with an issue. And they're all gone now. There's not going to be, I'm not going to come... I'm most likely not going to come into any issues while I'm grinding it that uh, I'm going to have to deal with. If I hadn't dealt with them 100% at the time, I'd be grinding that knife. I'd be almost done. I'd see a little inclusion. And like, oh, crap, let me see if I can grind through this. And it would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the next thing you know, you got a ruined knife. It's gone. There's nothing you can do to save it at that point. So deal with them when they come up. And, uh, you know, you might just save... The knife you're working on. Um, again, it depends on the pattern you're doing. If you're doing a particular pattern, that might have ruined the pattern. But for what we're doing, where it's just sort of random with those grooves cut in it, so it's you know it's almost like a ladder pattern, but it's still sort of random. It's not going to make a big deal, I don't think. I don't know if each side is going to be equal, if each side is going to match, but um, they'll both look cool. Both sides will look cool, and, and that's all I'm after, is uh, something that is aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And it's still a decent knife, and I think we're going to reach that point. So, uh, going to end this video. Um, I guess I'll do the next one, too. I'll do the next step. I'll show you how I grind the Damascus. Uh, we'll do another heat treat. And, uh, what, all the hand sanding. Um... I'm, I'm at the point where I've gotten good enough on the grinder where my hand sanding is, you know, a lot smaller than it used to be. I used to take 15, 20 hours just... Uh, um, but I'm at the point where I've gotten good enough on the belt sander to, uh, to get down to, you know, maybe two hours of just hand sanding. So, we'll... Uh, We'll do it. I'll go through my normal steps and we'll put the handle on it and that'll be the whole next video is finishing this thing up. So, uh, can't show you the etch today. 
it's not ready but thanks for checking this video out thanks for checking the website out and again all the Apple people uh, if you'll let me know uh, what's not working on the Apple side of things so I can try and figure out how to fix that I would appreciate that and I will catch you next time